So, it's 2016, and as inevitably as Kimmy follows Bottas, so too does Formula One slap a 47th band-aid on its bullet-ridden Zeppelin, instead of heading back to the Hindenburg station for a ruddy good think about what it's done. Today we're going to be looking at the new tyre rules, so strap on in. The new rules regarding who gets which tyres are, well, some would say unclear, where some people might say they're so mind bogglingly unclear that it feels like driving at midnight into fog while blindfolded, earplugged and beaten over the head with a bag of potatoes. But that's just some people. Truthfully, if F1 were a board game, it's quickly becoming less of the quick and simple Ludo and more of the overly complex 4-hour strategy games with 10 different types of pieces and inventory cards. But as with any wildly complicated board game, the process can actually be pretty fun, but you need to see it played out first for it all to make sense. Let's begin. Over each race weekend, each driver will be allocated 13 sets of tyres to use, one set being two front and two rear tyres. That's four tyres for those you keep in count. Of these 13 sets, two sets will be taken aside and reserved by Pirelli for the race. Um, more on that in just a sec. One more set will be reserved purely for the third qualifying session. Don't worry about these three sets for now. Just know that as a driver, you're left with 10 sets of tyres that you can pick yourself. So what, what does that mean? First, we need to get onto compounds. Pirelli have created five different types of tyre compound for 2016. The compounds are graded according to softness. Hard, medium, soft, super soft, and the new ultra soft. The softer the tyre, the more grip it will have, and the faster you can push the tyre. But the tyre will have a shorter lifespan. For each race, Pirelli will pick three of those compounds to bring to the race. They base that choice on the characteristics of the track. The idea is that there'll always be sensible tyres available, but people will have the ability to mix it up and try something aggressive. For our example, let's say Pirelli bring the hard, medium and soft tyres, simply because they are the easiest to distinguish when we're talking about them in this video. As a side note, when only two compounds of tyres were brought to a weekend, the harder was called the prime and the softer the option. Now we've got three compounds, I have no idea what the language will be. You can't call them soft, medium and hard because those are specific types of tyres, so uh, good luck to them. So from the three available tyre compounds, the driver can pick as many as they like to fill their allocation of ten. Two hard, two medium, six softs, whatever they want. Each driver will have to choose their tyre allocations eight weeks before each European race, or 14 weeks before a non-European race. This is just to allow Pirelli to manufacture and ship everybody's tyres. If drivers have not chosen their allocation by this deadline, they will be automatically assigned the default of three sets of the hardest tyres, three sets of the softest tyres, and four of the middle tyres. The tyre set allocated for a run in Q3 will be the softest available compound, in this case the softs. Pirelli will choose the compounds for the two sets allocated for the race. These two sets might be the same compound, they might be different. In this case, let's set them to the medium and the hard. I'm going to come on to how this will come into play in just a moment. So how will drivers use their 13 sets of tyres? Well, there are seven sessions throughout the weekend. Three practice, three qualifying, and the race itself. Each driver will have to start handing back sets of tyres at certain parts of the weekend. All this means is that once handed back, the driver won't be able to use that set anymore. One set of tyres must be surrendered 40 minutes into free practice one. Another set is handed back at the end of free practice one. Two sets are handed back at the end of FB2, and two sets at the end of FB3. Why do they hand sets back? It's to force drivers to put on a show instead of staying in the garage and saving their tyres. If they can't save those six sets of tyres, they've got no reason not to go out on the track and use them for testing. For qualifying in the race, this leaves four sets of tyres left from the driver's original selection of 10, plus one extra if they get into Q3, and at least one more from Pirelli's race allocation sets. Now drivers can choose exactly which sets to hand back at each point. It doesn't have to be the tyres I've chosen. There'll be some strategy in play as to which tyres they use for practice and which tyres they keep for the race. Throughout practice, they're going to try out some of the compounds they're going to be using in the race so they can form their strategies. The second thing they have to bear in mind is that during the race, they'll have to use two types of dry compound, including at least one of those sets Pirelli has set aside for the race. This only applies if the race stays dry mind. Are you still with me? Good. All I've really done so far is stack up rules one on top of the other, so let's see how it will play out. Let's assume you've picked 10 tyres in the standard spread, as shown here. In the scenario, let's also say you're a front-running team like Ferrari, and you're expecting to get into Q3. So we start with free practice one, remembering we're just doing some testing and setup work, nothing special, so we throw on the hardest compound and we give it back after 40 minutes, remembering that we cannot use this set again once we've handed it back in. 
You keep with the hardest compound for the rest of FP1, and at the end you hand that set back. Free practice two, time for some race simulations. You want to know how long the medium and hard compounds will run, so you do some race simulations in those. You hand both of those back at the end of the session. You're going to do some qualifying simulations in free practice three, so you run the medium and the soft tyres. Again, you hand these back at the end of the session. Those six sets of tyres are gone now. Qualifying one, you try and get through to Q2 on the medium compound. It works. Qualifying two, um, now you have to switch to a soft compound to make sure you get through to Q3. You manage to do a great time on your first run, so you don't have to use another set of tyres. Good work, team. Qualifying three, and Pirelli has set you aside a set of tyres just for this session, so you throw those on straight away. One run in Q3 probably isn't going to be enough though, so you slap on the other set of soft tyres to go for a second faster run. Your first set, the special Q3 only set, is now handed back. As you got into qualifying 3 and are in the top 10 on the grid, you have to start the race on the set of tyres with which you set your fastest time in Q2. I cannot for the life of me understand why this is a rule, but it is. So here we are. You're now ready to plan the race. You've got some more choices. As you're probably aware, the softer the tyre compound you use, the faster you will go, but the fewer laps you'll be able to do before the rubber runs out. Simply put, the softer the rubber, the grippier the tyre, at the cost of lifespan. This means you'll need to compromise between the ultimate speed a tyre can give you, and how long you can make it last. During the race you'll run several stints, determined overwhelmingly by the tyre life to be honest, so you'll be able to run three different compounds. Using more of the soft compound tyre might mean you'll have to make an extra pit stop, but if it's fast enough to make the pit stop time back, you may have the ideal strategy. By this point in the weekend you'll only have a certain amount of soft tyre sets left, and most of them will have been used for at least a few laps. So race time, you've got to get from the start to the end as fast as possible with the tyres you've got left. You're starting on the soft tyre that you used in Q2, that's mandatory. You've also got left, the medium tyre used in Q1, the soft tyre used in Q3, this untouched medium tyre and the two untouched tyres held back by Pirelli, one medium and one hard in this particular scenario. The soft tyre will take you a short way into the race. You slap on a medium, it won't get you all the way to the end, but you've got two new sets of those, so you can have a pretty fast three-stop race with soft, medium, medium. Alternatively, depending on how your first stint goes and how you find the hard tyre, you could even switch to that hard tyre for the first stop, having to have a long middle stint. This leaves you the option to switch to the soft tyre for a fast, aggressive final stint if you think you can pull that off. It will mean you have to do some overtaking in those final laps. In both cases, you've used one of the tyre sets allocated for the race as required. If we go for that plan A, this is how we've used the tyres across the weekend. The hard set left to one side by Pirelli wasn't used, but that's okay, as we had two new medium sets for the race. However, we had zero sets of soft tyres left for the race. So depending on how we feel about that, we might want to pick our allocations somewhat differently. Let's imagine instead of being Ferrari that we're a middle ranking team, maybe Toro Rosso. Maybe we're hoping but not expecting to get into Q3. You use softs in Q Q1 and Q2 because you're going to have to but you don't make it into Q3, so you don't get that extra set of softs. When the race comes in, you've now got two sets of used softs and three sets of mediums. You're never going to use all those mediums, so for you, a middle ranking team, you might want to pick an extra set of softs for your allocation to let you go aggressive in the race. Anyway, anyway tyre strategies are for another video, maybe. For now, I hope that lets you see what the new rules look like. So to recap, there are five sets of dry tyres. For a given race, Pirelli will choose three compounds to bring to the circuit. Each driver will have 13 sets of tyres to use over the weekend. Pirelli will reserve two sets of tyres for the race and one set for Q3, should you be so lucky. The set reserved for Q3 will be the softest compound and can only be used for Q3. The two sets reserved for the race will be chosen by Pirelli. They won't necessarily be the hardest compound or different from each other. The compounds for the remaining sets of 10 tyres are chosen by the driver. Two sets of tyres must be surrendered after each free practice session. The four remaining unreserved tyres are for you to use in qualifying and the race as you wish, with the Q3 tyre reserved for Q3. During the race, if you don't use a wet tyre, you must use at least one of the sets reserved by Pirelli. You can use all three compounds if you like, but you must use at least two different types. Different drivers, even within the same team, can choose whichever selection of the three compounds they choose within their ten unreserved sets. It'll be interesting to see how strategies vary between drivers. If you don't watch practice, pay attention to the reports on how drivers are finding different compounds and which sets they have left for the race. Hopefully we'll see some drivers throwing the softest compound at the race to get some really aggressive strategies and make up places. So that's it really. I hope that makes some vague sense to you. When the season starts again I'm sure it'll all click into place pretty quickly, but it's good to get a head start on these things. If you need anything else explained just let me know and I'll see what I can do about it.